Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we are going to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers, and as you can see here, we're starting something a little new, but not really. It's just something that has finally been recently released. And this document here is the supposed rationale for overturning the 2020 FDA decision to ban the GED device. If you remember on this channel, I went from covering JD versus AH to a full turn to go after the JRC full time, all day, every day, right? This is why this is had to happen, all right? Disclaimers. In the description box, you, if you are unfamiliar with the Stop the Shocks campaign or the campaign against the troubled teen industry, you're going to find within all the pertinent links in regards to both campaigns. In particular, I want you to uh, take note of the article written by Neuroclastic, a small non for profit started by autistics for autistics. In this article, they interviewed over 900 ABA professionals literally from all over the world in regards to the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center's so-called behavior modification program. The Judge Rotenberg Educational Center felt so threatened by this particular article in spite of the fact that even to this day, this article has still not gone viral, nor has it been covered by anyone within the mainstream media, that they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, folks, so please, if you could, read that article and share it on all your social media. We also linked in there Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat and a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding in case the JRC actually sees through with their threat. Another pertinent article I would like you to take note of is the Ozarks first article regards to Agape Boarding School, a so-called Christian-themed boarding school that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has ended up with over 21 civil lawsuits and claims levied against it. Every single last one of them has been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services. The claims range from sodomy, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, and more, folks. You have folks being arrested by the FBI from this place. You have a registered child predator still on the premises. And still, still nothing is done. See, they tried to prove, pull a fast one on Missourians by trying to simply just change the name. Unfortunately for them, and very fortunately for the boys in this area, that um, still didn't fly. Not because legally they weren't able to get away with it, because they were, but because at this point they have been exposed for what they are. So nobody was signing up their kids to be sent to this hellhole. So I still want you to read it because there are schools that are going from coast to coast, that evangelical chain of schools that carry out the exact same behavior as was noted and exposed in regards to agape. Matter of fact, within these change of evangelical schools, you can have multiple people having worked at multiple evangelical schools pushed down the chain, as it were, when they got caught in other states, okay? Pay attention. Please read that article. All right. Trigger warning, folks. When we discuss places like Agape Boarding School for Boys and the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center, 
You're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with mental health issues and disabled people being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, at the very least, please use the headphones. Another trigger warning. This channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We do use profanity on occasion and we do speak on dark subjects. So if your child is 16 and younger, they're watching this. Very obviously, parental supervision is advised. Warning, if you are not used to this channel, I rant. I rant a lot. I rant about even completely unrelated things in the middle of exposing the JRC. I'm sorry in advance, all right? Another warning, fall allergies. You're going to hear some clearing of the throat. You're going to see me stop in the middle of a video to hack up half my lungs. You're going to hear me go off on left field, take a left turn, and take another left turn, and take a whole 10 minutes to circle back to the point. Just be prepared for that, all right? I may be autistic, but every once in a while, some of those ADHD tendencies like to creep in where it's pretty much, I love you, I love you, I love you, squirrel. All right? There's crossovers between the two diagnoses for a reason, folks. Particularly in hyperfocus and what can jerk us out of it suddenly. All right. So this is the United States Courts of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. This was argued April the 23rd, 2021 and decided on July 6th, 2021. The Judge Roteberg Educational Center Incorporated Petitioner versus the United States Food and Drug Administration Respondents consolidated with the 21088 on petitions for review of an order of the Food and Drug Administration. We're going to get triggered, folks. We're going to see a lot of abuse apologentia. We're going to see a ridiculous amount of appeals to authority. You're going to hear, like, you just don't understand. You're lay people. You must let us people with numerous letters behind our name explain to you th how things really are and how you must not trust your own eyes. You must trust us. Be prepared for that, all right? Just going to sit here and tell you now what we're in for. We got all these names. Da, 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 da. Okay, this is Sintel, Senior Circuit Judge. The Judge Rotenberg Educational Center and the parents and guardians of its patients both petitioned for review a Food and Drug Administration rule banning electric stimu stimulation devices used to treat aggressive or self injurious behavior. I want you to perceive this. There is an entire lobby in Washington, D.C. right now at the behest of the Judge Rotenberg Center, whose sole purpose in life is to advocate for disabled kids to be tortured. Okay? Wrap your brain around this. People with disabilities are looked at as sub so subhuman by these individuals that there is literally a lobby that exists whose sole purpose is to advocate for this torture to continue. If you wonder why we scream ableism, if you wonder why that you're playing victim, victim my ass, all right? We have video surveillance footage of people like me being tortured, starved, sleep deprived, jumped, 
sexually assaulted, the list literally goes on. And yet, and yet, right? You still have people who argue for this to continue to go on. Right? Even when the list of the behaviors for which they use as justification for these types of insanity to be perpetuated on us would be considered as heinous and child abuse if it was being applied to a neurotypical child doing the exact same thing. Okay? This is not us wanting to be victims and play the victim card, okay? At all. That's what the media wants you to think. That's what autism speaks you to think. That's what the JRC wants you to think. Okay? Because how do they continue to perpetuate and continue to get money off of our pain and suffering? It should go without saying, right? We feel hated and discriminated against. And those people are treating us as though we're subhuman. Because that's what's happening. And we got surveillance video footage to prove it. So please take your conservative talking points and shove them directly where the sun doesn't shine. All right? Because I got no time. None. In its rule, the FDA determined that the devices present an unreasonable and substantial risk of illness or injury, but only when used to treat aggressive or self-injurious behaviors. The petitioners contend that banning a medical device for a particular purpose regulates the practice of medicine in violation of 21 U.S.C. 396. We agree and grant the petitions for review and vacate the FDA's rule. This is insane, folks. The torture of children has been allowed to continue through a loophole that says, well, it must be banned for all reasons. Here's the problem. The GED is a separate device from everything else that's ever been on the market before. What they are talking about here is two entirely different machines. We've talked about the SIBIS device before. It is a device that is only similar to the GED in the form that it provides skin shocks. The SIBIS is a machine that is actually administering shocks at the level that the JRC claims their GED is. We are talking like about 1, 2 in pH, okay? The GET device is different. The fact of the matter is that the fact that they are trying to say that you're not banning it for anything else is insane because we are talking about one very specific machine. We know for a fact that the GED device does not exist anywhere else except at the JRC. So the fact that the argument was able to be made and actually succeeded, by the way, of, well, you either have to ban the entire device or they should be able to continue to torture disabled people with it makes no logical, coherent sense. 
The device banned was the GED, not the SIBIS. Matter of fact, the SIBIS didn't even come into this conversation. But the fact that the JRC and the DC Circuit Court pulled in a device that wasn't even being argued about as a way to shadily get this rule overturned makes no coherent sense to me. Because as far as I knew, this was about the GED device. Not about the SIBIS. As far as I knew, the only device mentioned in the FDA documents is the GED device. Again, not the SIBIS. This is, as you can see, you can hear my frustration, right? How can you vacate a decision? saying, but you're not banning the entirety of its use for the GED device, and therefore the rule is being overturned, when the GED device is being used in one single place in the entirety of the world, literally. That the device is being used for very specific reasons. That the device has been documented through medical documents to do exactly this. Unreasonable and a substantial risk of illness or injury. It was very clearly demonstrated by medical documents, by psychologists with more letters behind their name than Dr. Matthew Israel has ever had to do exactly that. But no, we are going to pull in a completely unrelated device that and none of this has even been discussed once except as what was used previously, but was not the device that was up for debate here as a means in a way to vacate and overturn the FDA's decision because money switched hands. So we are going to use the flimsiest, most nonsensical, illogical argument to overturn this that I've ever seen in my lifetime, okay? Yeah. I wanted to bring up that point that when you look at the facts that the device that is a part of this discussion is not used anywhere at all throughout the entirety of the world, hell, I'll throw in the cosmos except at the JRC. And that that device that we are arguing about only used in that school for those specific reasons. And for the DC Circuit Court to look at that and then say, well, because you didn't ban it for every single use, we vacate it. Okay, DC Circuit Court, where else is the GED device being used in the United States? And what is it being used for? I want examples. I want documented evidence that this device is being used anywhere but at the JRC. I want documented evidence that it is being used for reasons that differ for why the JRC uses it. 
because that is the only way that this D.C. Circuit Court decision could possibly make any form of logical coherent sense. I'm sorry if you can tell this has been bothering me since it happened in 2021. Their ruling makes no sense. Because the SIBIS machine and the GED device are two completely different devices. The GED, which is the device that is up for debate here, has not been used anywhere else on the planet than at the JRC. It has not been used for any other purpose than their bullshit claims right here. So how this decision got vacated makes no coherent, logical, legal sense to me. Maybe one of the lawyers on LawTube can explain it to me like I'm five, but it makes no sense to me. None. None. Are they trying to argue that if you ban the GED device, you have to ban all similar uh, electrical stimulation shock devices? Is that what they're trying to say? Because if that's the case, why is that not more fleshed out? I'm sorry, that rant went on a little bit longer than I intended it to. So we're going to go ahead and close out on it here. Make it make sense. Explain it to me like I'm five. All right. Because the device we are talking about is not used anywhere else on earth than at the JRC. So how the D.C. Circuit Court was able to use the argument that unless it is banned for all other reasons that the device is banned entirely, the FDA rule must be vacated makes zero sense to me. Okay? We're going to close out on that. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this morning. And as always, folks, we here at Smelling Tea do hope you have a good one. I'll see you next week.